Hey fam, it's your girl Chef D. I'm back dishing in the kitchen with Chef D. This video is all about a quick and simple. This was a quarantine dish that I made when we were all going through this whole this pandemic and we're still in it right now. But this one is a chicken pasta dish and it's called Tuscan chicken and it's really good. It's quick. It's simple. It uses some ingredients that some people consider fancy or exotic, but hey, you can substitute. I'll tell you about all of that. And this is Nadia and I, we were in the kitchen doing a live and we did this one. I love this video. I just love the fact that we got in there and we got into it. So I hope you enjoyed this Tuscan chicken dish. If you have any questions, any comments, please leave those. Click the notification bell. Subscribe to the channel like comment do all of those things and in all thy eating what do i need you to do i need you to eat good thank you for joining chef d as we dish in the kitchen one more time hey everybody how are y'all today i'm so glad to see everybody after doing this yesterday we decided to hop on and do it again today because everybody's still home and we're still in the kitchen and so I didn't really know what we were going to do but I came up with a Tuscan chicken today so Tuscan chicken is just, just chicken watching. with a cream sauce and then hey Amanda how are you it's a cream sauce so whenever you hear stuff like Tuscan or Florentine it's some kind of sauce that has come from Italy and Tuscan just means that it has cream um, garlic, some kind of Parmesan cheese, and tomatoes and spinach. If you hear Florentine, it's the same thing. Cream, garlic, cheese, Parmesan cheese, but no tomatoes. So if you hear tomatoes, think Tuscan. No tomatoes, think Florentine. So today we are doing Tuscan chicken. It's really good. And normally when I make it, I make it from chicken thighs because chicken thighs really hold moisture and you can brown them really good in the skillet and they won't I'm dry out too bad, but remember we're on quarantine. So y'all I didn't have no chicken thighs So today I had chicken breast So we are gonna use some chicken breast that I cut up and I need to turn this burner off And so we've got about three pounds of chicken breast that has been cut up and right now I'm just slicing up maybe a half of a red pepper. We're gonna dice that up and the chicken breast I'm sorry, let's get back to that. The chicken breast has been seasoned with salt pepper and garlic and parsley this i said hi friend me ellie and trevor are all watching hey trevor <laughs> we i wish we could come and feed you trevor <laughs> and i know ellie would like it too so anyway it's really good guys it's a chicken dish and amanda you can make this one i promise you you can it's really easy so what goes in it is we're going to have some chicken that's going to get fried up in our skillet and it's not really fried i guess i'll say sauteed because we'll put a little oil in the pan and put our seasoned chicken there and then we'll make the sauce and the sauce is what makes the dish and i'm going to serve it over pasta and i usually put it over angel hair pasta because i am like a pasta snob and i didn't have any angel hair i mean come on the quarantine is messing up my pantry but I was able to find regular spaghetti. Mm -hmm. The last time we were in the store, there was no angel hair, so we just got regular. And we're going to roll with that, and it's still going to be good. So that's what we're going to work on. So right now, we're going to get this. And I'm sorry, because I know yesterday I had all of the, the ingredients already done for you guys. Yesterday's video was smoked brisket. Click on the link at the end of the video to check it out. And I'm just going to slice them up. It's still tomato and it'll still be in the dish and it's going to be fine. And I'm thinking that we won't need all of these. What I've cut up is four and I've cut them in half and I should have showed you guys how I did that. But you cut them in half and you take the seeds out because seeds just will make your sauce too watery. But we're not going to go through all that. I'm not going to make you all watch me de seed a tomato. That's just a little, a little redundant. So we're going to get these tomatoes all chopped up and get those in there. So we got our tomatoes going, we got our pepper, and we got our chicken already seasoned. When you take your chicken out and you rinse your chicken, I've heard so many things about not washing and rinsing chicken. Okay, over here in the quarantine chicken, even before there was a pandemic, we wash our chicken because I clean my sink and do all of that stuff. I just have to wash meat out of the package. So we got our chicken there already seasoned. 
when you after you rinse your chicken and wash your chicken go ahead and pat it dry and then add your seasoning to it so that's what i've done with the chicken that's sitting there on the cookie sheet and in a second we're going to get over to our skillet so yeah. we're going to do another tomato yeah a few comments uh ronnie gobble said hello again beautiful hey nephew uh miss evans said watching until my zoo hey uh marvis young said hey chef uh hey, and Marvin. auntie ronda said hey chef d hey ronda so everybody i'm so glad you all hopped on and we're gonna get this dish going i promise you i was just trying to get a few things more chopped while we're getting giving everybody an opportunity to hop on here and today we're doing the tuscan chicken for those that did not hear tuscan is just a chicken with a cream sauce and they call it that because it's supposed to be from the region of tuscany with all they're all happy about their tomatoes i don't know if we got tomatoes from tuscany we got some plain old roma tomatoes out of the grocery store so be happy with the little roma tomatoes we sealed them we cut them in half we seeded them to take the seeds out Hey, and now we chopped them up with a little bit of pepper, red pepper. And if you notice when I cook stuff like this, I really like red pepper because I just like color in my food. I just feel like it looks so good. And this is not a whole lot of side extra stuff that we got going, but that's what we're going to use. So now we're over to the skillet, guys. We're going to get our skillet going. And also when we finish this, I'm doing something different with this one. We are going to finish it with some prosciutto. Prosciutto is a little ham. It's like an Italian ham. And prosciutto comes in little packs like this. It's very thin. And it's almost like Italian bacon. I really like it. It's very flat. And you can eat it raw as an appetizer. If you ever wanted to do it that way, you could put it with melon or with fig. And it's really good just like this out of the package. But we're going to do something different today. We're going to fry it up in the skillet and y'all know I love to hear the sizzle in the skillet so we're gonna fry it up in the skillet and that's what we're gonna finish our dish with it's gonna be really good hey auntie uh Diane George said hi girlfriend hey Diane how are you and Nadia is filming for me guys so she's telling me what everybody's saying so while our skillet is getting hot we're gonna put a little EVOO in there that's our little olive oil that we got going and it's about two tablespoons, just generally two turns of the bottle is about two to three tablespoons. So we got that chicken. Remember I told you guys about the chicken. It has already been seasoned and it's seasoned with salt, pepper, garlic, and a little bit of parsley. So I'm gonna get that started. Our first set, love the sizzle. The sizzle means we're gonna get a good color on our chicken and it's gonna taste so good and it'll be able to hold up to our sauce. And I told you guys, you can make this with chicken thighs. You can use a whole chicken cut up and do the part. But we're in the quarantine kitchen. I didn't have chicken thighs or whole chicken. I just had chicken breast. I had some spinach. And I said, that's where we're going today. But know this. You can do that sauce that I'm telling you about with any kind of protein. So if you decided you wanted to do it with salmon, I've done it that way, it's good. You can do it with salmon. You can do it with chicken. I have not tried it with beef, but it's really good with fish and with the chicken. So we're gonna let that go for a little bit. And we got our prosciutto back here and it's crisping up. And it really is just a flat little bacon and it smells so good. And you just let it go and it'll get really brown, really crisp. And that's what we're gonna finish this sauce and this dish off with. And it's gonna taste amazing. Trust me when I tell you, you'll really like it. I'm gonna get a little more um, season on these pieces so as you see they're browning up pretty quick because they're really thin pieces of chicken breast that I had and so I got those and they're going and it does not take long at all and this is what I tell you I try to I'm trying to give you all things that you can do really quick and with what you have where you can substitute and all of that it sounds all fancy but all you're trying to do is just keep your sanity and give yourself a different little recipe, something you hadn't tried before. We eat enough chicken where we get days where we're just tired of what the same old chicken. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna try to switch it up just a little bit, okay? So we're gonna take our little prosciutto off, put it on a platter, and we're just gonna keep going. We're probably gonna do about three or four slices of that because we got quite a bit of chicken. I had about three pounds of chicken. But you can do this however it fits your family. 
And we'll eat this. Right. Auntie Rhonda said, no, it's fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Rhonda, it's not fancy. This is, okay, it sounds fancy, but it's good. It's just spinach and the little stuff that's going to make it seem fancy. It's not real fancy. It's good. Watch, when we get to the sauce, you're going to be like, oh, that was simple. You're going to be making this. You're going to make this for me the next time I come and visit you. So now here we're going to show our prosciutto and show our chicken breast while I grab a fork. Miss <laughs> Beth says, can you come be my personal chef? Yes. <laughs> and you know I used to be a personal chef, Dad, for a very long time. Uh, Joe and Stephanie said, wow, and healthy are rice. <laughs> yes. Uh, you could actually do this keto. Seriously, when you talk about healthy, this is one of those keto things, but you wouldn't put it over pasta. Like, let's say you're doing cauliflower rice, because I've done it that way, too. You can make it and put it, like, over cauliflower rice, and then it becomes all keto because it's not... You know, you can have the fat on keto, the protein, and you can just eliminate the starch, and it would be perfect. Perfect. That is so mm -hmm. true. And Alana said, you look cute. Hey, Alana. Thank you. So we got our prosciutto going, guys. And I'm trying to get my little chicken breast to get a little color on them, and then we're going to take those off. And we are cooking with gas here. Now, I told you all that we were doing pasta, so I have a pot of boiling water back there, and it's salted and with a little bit of olive oil in it. And always salt your pasta water. It should almost taste like the ocean or the sea. It should be that salty. Uh, Auntie Ronnie said, I don't have nothing in my house on your stove, Lil. <laughs> <laughs> Rhonda, yes, you do. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to have to do a quarantine grocery list for the next time we go out. <laughs> Next time we go to the store, I'm going to tell everybody what's about. I think that's a good idea, people. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to put up a list. Get you some chicken, get you some vegetables, and I promise you, you can end up making a fancy dish. Now, I cook those, and they really don't have to be done all the way through. They're kind of brown. You see, they got a little color on them, but they don't have to be totally, like, cooked all the way through. Uh, Diane J George said, girl, that hair, I'm so loving it. <laughs> thank you, Diane. I have to put it all up, you know, in the kitchen. But thank you. It has grown tremendously. And you all, I'm just seasoning the other side of this chicken with a little um, garlic pepper and salt because I didn't get both that you can buy in the store. Sometimes I make it at home, but remember, we were quarantine kitchening, and so I was just trying to get stuff and get it done. So our prosciutto is all crisp up. I think we got enough of it. I may put it back in for it all to just get a little more crisp. Because I want it really crisp. Because what I'm going to do is chop it up. And when this is all done, we're going hey, to... Hey, Tanika. We're going to put it on the chicken. And it's going to be amazing. So as you see, this chicken is cooking maybe a minute aside. It is not a long time at all. This is one of those dishes, too that when I get done with all of the chicken, normally I would deglaze the pan with a little bit of white wine, but I only have red wine to stay with that, and we are going to just deglaze it. I'm sorry, guys. We're gonna deglaze it with some chicken stock. So our prosciutto is all done. We can get rid of that skillet. And I think we're probably just five minutes in, and we're just about done with our dish. This is one of those that does not take a long time at all. Because after you get all of the chicken done and we make the sauce, then we'll put it all back in the pan together, let it cook down, and it is amazing. You will like it. I promise you. And it has such a good flavor, and if you make it, it, it really has like a restaurant kind of style quality to it. You would like it a lot. So we're gonna finish that all off. But how is everybody today? You all, talk to me. Let Nadia know how you all are doing. Is everybody hanging in there? How you feeling? Are you like still doing okay? How are you overall? I mean, I know it's, it's all different. This is not what we're used to. People are not used to being in close quarters like this. And we all get that, but it is what it is. Okay. Guys, I'm still with you. So, I'm, I'm deglazing this pan. That's what I was talking about. We were wine, but I'm not going to make you guys do that today. We're going to just let it cook down with a little chicken broth. So, that's what just went in there. Here's some chicken broth. Miss <laughs> Hart said, Ellie is loving this. 
Awesome, Ellie. You gotta, I gotta come cook with you whenever we can. So what we're doing now, guys, is since I put that in there, we're gonna let that reduce. Now, if it was wine, it would give your sauce a really rich flavor, but how I put, and, and it may have been just about a cup of liquid. We put that in there and we're just gonna let it reduce till it's like almost all the liquid is gone out of the pan. And that's just to get the crumbs off the pan that you get. And there's actually a name for that. It's called Fond. You want that because it has the flavor from your chicken. Uh, Diane George so says, I'm blessed and highly favored. Uh, Shanice Richmond said, hey, Chicago. Hey, Shanice. Um, and Ms. Beth says, getting projects done around the house every day. My yard looks better than it has in years. Awesome. See? So, Deb, you got something done that you were not able to get done before. Y'all, that was my um, chicken broth I was telling you I was putting in there. I use a dried version because we were not using wine. But if you were doing wine, you would not have to do that step. So, we're going to just let that cook on down a little bit. And our pasta water is starting to boil. And so, I'm going to drop pasta in there in a minute. Audrey Ryan says, I'm good. In the kitchen making what you're making by the way of tuna. <laughs> You are so special. <laughs> add some spinach to it and it'll be, it'll be Tuscan tuna. So add that to it. So guys, while that is all gone, we're going to let that go. We got our pasta going. That's going to boil all the way down. And we are just about done. I know it seems like we're not. We're not going to do all of that right now. I'm going to put all of that chicken away for you guys because I want to get this all prepared so you would be able to see it and see that it does go pretty quick. So as soon as this cooks down a little bit more, it's going to get all concentrated and all of that is going to just cook away and then we'll add our vegetables and add our spinach to it and we will be just about done. I'm glad everybody's okay though and hanging in there. I'm glad everybody is really doing well. I am actually committed to hopping on here doing this and I have to give you all a little bit of history about where that came from with this whole commitment thing. My daughter was online with her youth group on Friday night and they got to talking because our teenagers nobody's talking to them we're not really talking to our kids this is different for them too and she was on there and they got to talking and they talked about how they're feeling so they're all feeling different too this is a new normal for them and she talked about not feeling as committed to playing her instrument she plays French horn as she had been and she really wanted to do better with that so she decided with her friends that they would be committed to something that they felt like they were missing and not doing. And what she came up with was that she was going to commit herself to playing her instrument for 100 days. And that really like impressed me. So you know what I said? I'm going to commit myself to doing something I've been promising I would do for 100 days straight. I cook all the time, but I said I was committed to getting on here and doing this and just helping because people will ask me all the time how to do stuff and this is just some little stuff that people can learn how to do on their own at home mm -hmm. so right now guys i just added the tomatoes that i chopped and some red pepper into that skillet we're gonna put some garlic in here i got about three tablespoons of garlic in there and that's gonna cook it sounds like a lot but it's really not because we're gonna use a lot of cream so we're gonna put that in there and let that go for a few minutes and while that's going I'm gonna start adding spinach any of you that have cooked with fresh spinach you know disappear it was two bags so I think each bag is like eight ounces of spinach so that's about a pound of spinach but it is going to cook away to nothing trust me when I tell you so we're gonna put this in there and let that cook away uh, Diane George said is it good to rinse your pasta after cooking you know what, it actually is, Diane, just don't rinse it crazy. Like, I think sometimes people rinse it way too much. You want to leave it, rinse it just enough to stop the cooking process. Like, rinse it in some cold water for just a few seconds and let it drain in the colander and then add the sauce. The reason you don't want to rinse it way too much is because you want to give the sauce something to stick to. And the sauce will stick to the starch in the pasta. Uh, Uncle Gary said, well, Chef, one of these days I want to be able to do that. You are a mess, Gary. You can already do all of this and then some. Stop it. Stop it. But thank you. I love you. So, guys, this spinach is cooking away really quick. If you notice, it'll just start going, going, and it will cook totally away. 
normally I will put the skillet in, put the spin and let it wilt, but I switched it up a little bit because I wanted to give these tomatoes time to cook because they aren't my normal tomatoes that I use. When you use the little grape and cherry tomatoes, they're smaller, even though I cut these smaller, they have a different texture and so they cook a little bit different. But it's smelling amazing with that garlic in there and all of our seasonings and stuff, it smells really good already. So I just keep doing this until we manage to fit all of our spinach in there. We don't want that extra water in there. So we got our spinach going. It's going. Going good now. And we got a lot of liquid in there. So we're going to let that cook down some. And as it cooks away, the liquid will start to disappear. Down for just a few moments. And what I'm going to do is chop our little prosciutto somewhere. Well, I thought I was, but I moved my cutting board, so let me find that. Tons of noise. So Ellie's still with me cooking. Is she enjoying this part? She's gotta learn how to do this. We're gonna have Ellie learn how to do all of this in her kitchen. So guys, I normally would not be close to the skillet like that doing this, but this little bacon is really crisp, really good, smells really good. It's a different kind of, it's just a ham, a really thin press. It's a cross between a ham and bacon. If you don't eat pork, I'm sorry, but it's a really good finish to this. I think you should try it and you would like it. It's hard to say yes. <laughs> you would like it all. <laughs> she said, is she having a party? <laughs> no. <laughs> I went to party just tell her this is her party. So guys, there's my prosciutto. And we got a little bit, we got it chopped. Sometimes I make it finer. Sometimes I keep it chunky. Just depends. I think yesterday, if you saw me, don't call the janky police on me because we have not, nothing in the world had told us we would be filming, so. Uh, Pastor Winfield said, are you taking my recipes? <laughs> L-M-B-O-S-M-H. <laughs> Winfield! Of course not, Pastor! We pray that's not what I'm doing. <laughs> but I love you anyway. So guys, we're going to let that cook down a little bit. As you see, this is what I meant. Remember how much spinach we had? Look how this spinach is like almost gone. Just nearly gone. It, does. it will cook away a lot so it can evaporate a little bit quicker and I'm not trying to hold you guys on here all day long but I actually wanted to plate this one for you guys so I want you to see it when it's all done throw down you and your family <laughs> you have not forgotten the barbecues and stuff man I'm trying to get hitman in the kitchen soon but he's too busy so we need him to be able to do that right now so pasta is almost getting there I don't know why my boil went away but we're getting there. It's close. It's close, guys. But y'all, it smells really good. You said nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, guys, we're going to take our chicken and add it back into here. I wanted it to go a little bit more, but it's really okay because it'll cook down eventually. I'm going to let it go. He said, tell Big T and he said, I need a grilling. A brisket video, believe it or not. So... I will have to put that up for you so you can see it. You got you got to do it, and you can do it. It'll be fine. It's an all-night process. I might suggest you buy a little smoker to do it on first, but you can do it. Guys, I'm really liking how this is smelling. Like, I can smell the season. I smell the garlic. Like, I know what I'm looking for when I smell it, but I do taste stuff. If you see that's a plastic spoon, don't be tasting stuff and putting your regular spoon back in there. I don't care if nobody's watching or not. Don't do that even before the pandemic. That's Oh, we on point. We are on point, on point. And if you notice, it was plastic because it's going in the trash. Okay. You said, oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We got that. So, guys, this is the only thing that makes this Tuscan is the fact that we add some cream. So we're gonna put some cream in here and it's gonna go. And as you see, it stopped bubbling a little bit. So we put that and now we into that. And I generally love browner, but it's, so we're gonna go with that, see? 
This is gonna taste so good. And then we're gonna finish it off with that Parmesan. You know, O M and G, baby. You're talking about a happy tummy. Happy, happy, happy tummy. Happy. So there we go. We got our chicken in there. I mean, it's just pretty. Like, it'll just make you feel better just looking at it. Just the colors of it. It's just pretty. That's why I like to cook. Food is just pretty to me. I mean, and I love how it tastes. I mean, I'm greedy. I'm not gonna lie, but it's just good. And on this plate, remember we put our platter, we put our chicken on there and all that juice ran out of there. Put that back in your pan. That's all the great flavor from your chicken. Diane George said, would that be heavy whipping cream? Heavy, heavy whipping cream. Heavy, and it was about a cup of cream. It was about a cup. And what's gonna happen is you see like how tall it is in the skillet. I am going to let it reduce down some. So it'll, I'll probably let it go for about five or 10 minutes. And when I say reduce, you'll see like the sauce will be getting thick and it'll, and it won't be as does that. You don't have to worry about it staying loose. And so after you let it go for about five minutes, I got like a cup of really fine ground Parmesan and we're gonna sprinkle that on there. I see you this said, looks like Olive Garden. And it tastes, girl, it's really good. I re it really tastes, and I'm not just saying that it is, you could do this. When we come to your house, I'm gonna make you do this, I promise you. And you can do it, it's perfect. So guys, when we put that cheese on it, all that's going to do is thicken it up even more. We're gonna let this go for like five minutes. Pasta is gonna be ready. You all know, we talked about it a little bit when I was answering Diane's question. When the pasta is done, you pull it out, you rinse it just a few minutes, not, not even a few minutes, maybe a few seconds, 10 to 15 seconds in a little cool water just to stop it from cooking. Toss it with some olive oil, season it with maybe a little garlic and a little parsley. Don't add any salt to it because you salted the water and that goes into the pasta. It permeates your pasta. And guess what? I mean, like really, we are done. Like. Your whole dinner is done. So this is why I'm able to come home and cook like this. But I will tell you that if you get stuff in order, like before I came on, I cleaned the spinach. I chopped the tomatoes with some of them. If you get all of that stuff done, I mean, I know during the week we are busy and you don't really have time to do that when we were back in our old way of life. But if you do just a little prep, so let's just say you had to come in and do 15 minutes of prep. This is still a quick meal, a full meal that you can have on the table for your family and then the I can bring some and share it with your little girlfriends at work and stuff. And then you fed everybody and everybody's okay. So like how I just did this, we'll put it over pasta. Nadia will probably make a salad. We'll grab out some breadsticks or some garlic bread or something. And there you go. You got a full meal done. And I don't know if it's like 15, 20 minutes. So y'all, I wanted to hop on and show you that we can do this. We got this. We are cooking while we quarantine, learning some new things, stepping out of our comfort zones. All of us are. This is so uncomfortable for me, believe it or not, because I just like to come in and do it. And I don't mind doing it if y'all are right here, but doing it on this, it feels really weird to me. But I'm so glad to be doing it. I hope you all enjoyed it. My pasta didn't get done while we were, you know, on tape. But you all know, everybody that makes some spaghetti before. You know how to make spaghetti. Make your pasta. I normally use angel hair pasta. They have a little pasta called... Capioli, I think that's correct. It's a little small pasta. That tastes really good with it too. If you're trying to do keto, do it over some cauliflower rice. Tastes perfect. You would love it, love it, love it. So I'm gonna let this go for about another five minutes. We're gonna be done. We're gonna plate it up. I'll post a picture. I have some questions, so let me see. Nadia's helping um, me, guys. Pastor Winfield said, I need to fall through. Y'all need help eating that? <laughs> Come on, <laughs> I'll meet you at the garage. Diane George said you need to get a YouTube channel and post all of your videos. Okay, um, oh, Diane, gotcha. <laughs> Miss Gaskill said yummy. <laughs> cool, cool. And I got pumpkin bread for you whenever that's back in season, Lisa, I promise. <laughs> uh, Auntie Rhonda said, nope, you can do it and I'll watch. <laughs> uh, Pastor Winger said, I see shrimp in your future in there. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you didn't see this part. You can do this with salmon, you can do this with shrimp. It is the bomb with shrimp. Roast the shrimp just a little bit and put it, yeah, you got it, sir. You can do this. Uh, Miss Beth said, you need your own cooking show. Uh, Miss Florence said, it looks delicious. Thank uh, you all. Miss Gaskell said, I love it. Uh, Titi Monica said, look good. Thanks, guys. Auntie Rhonda said, this was great and I'm proud of you. Yes, 
love you all. Thank you for the support and the push. Uh, uh, and thank goodness Nadia is filming. <laughs> yes, we need Nadia to film. But you all, I love you all so much. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to have to think of something to do. And honestly, I cook like this like every day for real. So I've just decided when I come in the kitchen, I'm just going to hop on here and do some stuff. I don't know why I'm not a thousand and nine pounds because I really do cook <laughs> like this every day. And I eat it too. I love you all. Ms. Gaskin said, what would you call your cooking show? I don't even know. You all get, that's a good one. So my friend Lisa just asked me, what would I call my cooking show? You all should send me out some stuff. What would you suggest? I wouldn't even know. I have no idea. <laughs> I call myself Chef D, but I don't know what I would call it at all. At all. But I'll take suggestions. I trust you all. Okay. And we did come up with the name, and that name is Dishin with Chef D. Stay okay. Get in tune. Listen to those that voice that you hear. The one that you know is the right one. Listen to him. I said to you yesterday, there's a beginning, there's an end. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He knows it all. Just like it started, it's got to end. We won't be like this forever, but what are you going to do different when you come out? What's going to be different in your life? What have you learned in this time that you had to be away and be with yourself? What have you learned? Maybe you learned some stuff you didn't like about yourself. Fix all of that stuff so when you come out, we can all just be shining even better like new money. I love y'all so much, and tune in next time. I don't know when that'll be, but I'll send something out to let you know. Love